Now let us consider another case of a critically damped response. So we have the same circuit. We have the same L, the same capacitance, but we have changed the resistance to be such that we can achieve the critically damped response and the initial current is the same 10 ampere the initial uh, capacitor voltage is the same 0 volt so if for this particular case if you now compute alpha omega 0 and s1 and s2 you are going to get alpha and omega 0 equal to the same value per second and the values of s1 and s2 will now be equal which is why this is the case of per second a critically damped uh, response so here we are going to get the voltage to be equal to a1 e raised to the power minus under root 6 t plus a2 e raised power minus under root 6 t volts but there is a problem here if we this is basically equivalent to a single constant a1 plus a2 e raised power minus under root 6 t call it a3 for example and we know that a single term cannot satisfy two initial conditions now it cannot satisfy two initial conditions what we mean by this is we can if we put uh, t is equal to 0 in this equation we can see that this condition is satisfied but this condition is not satisfied which uh, can be found from taking the derivative of this and then putting t is equal to 0 and then uh, remember in this case in the last case we had the capacitor current divided by capacitance so this case is not going to be handled by a single term of this form that is why in uh, differential equation text for critically damped cases we do not use a solution of this type a1 e raised power s1 t plus a2 e raised power s2 t why because s1 and s2 are equal so this is not going to be helpful here instead we need two terms which have different form so um, coming from maths they introduce a t here so we make this term uh, dependent on time and this is the term that remains as is the previous form so now we have two terms both are different and uh, again a1 is to be found and a2 is to be found the process is exactly the same so if we put t is equal to 0 in this what do we get voltage at 0 is 0 t0 here makes this whole thing 0 and now we directly find a2 and a2 is 0 here so simple t0 is a 1 and if we now take a derivative derivative of this whole expression and then put t is equal to 0 0 plus actually we are going to get we know we are going to get the capacitor current at 0 plus over c and it would be equal to now let us take the derivative of this thing and remember this is a function of t this is a function of t is a constant so we are going to imply the uv formula so using the uv formula we are going to get a1 t and the derivative of this thing is minus under root 6 e raised power minus under root 6 t plus a1 into minus sorry this thing as is and the derivative of this which is 1 so e raised to the power minus under root 6 t plus the derivative of this thing is minus under root 6 
a2 e raised power minus under root 6 t so if we now put t is equal to 0 here this term is going to go to 0 this term is going to become a1 and this term is going to become minus under root 6 a2 so what do we get this this was 10 equal to the current i 0 plus 10 over 1 over 42 is equal to a1 minus under root 6 a2 and obviously solving uh, this equation with this one knowing that a2 is 0 we are going to get the value for a1 which will be 420 in this case exactly so now a1 is has been found a2 is known so starting from this thing we now know the overall response would be equal to a1 420 t e raised power minus under 6 t volts this is the response for this critically damped case and we can see that this 2 is 0 when t is 0 because it has to satisfy the initial condition and when t becomes infinity to e raised power minus infinity would be 0 so this function is of a similar kind it starts from 0 goes to 0 so it rises to some value and then it decays to 0 again its form is quite similar to the case of overdamped we discussed in the last video however there would be a time when the value will be maximum and let us try to find the settling time for this case as well a, ti a time after which the value decays to 1% or lower of the maximum value and stays low so let us try to find for this case as well obviously the procedure is going to be exactly the same that was why we did it with uh, uh, with detail in the last video last case and here obviously if we take the derivative derivative can again be taken by using the uv formula here and then finding the time for which the maximum value will occur and let me just give you the answers you can find it for yourself so in 0 0.408 seconds it will rise to the max value and the max value would be um, the max value would be 63.1 volts and if you solve this again using the um, using mathematics your knowledge of mathematics or any solver on the internet or maybe uh, by iteratively solving using uh, trial and error you can come up to see that the settling time would be something like 3.12 seconds now if you remember in the overdamped case we had the same l cmc same initial current in the inductor same initial voltage across the capacitor all that has changed is the value of resistance in this circuit and by changing the value of resistance we have achieved a lower settling time in fact without the response ever overshooting the final value overshooting means that it overshoots so it has to settle down to zero but it becomes negative here overshoots and then settle to zero now without the response ever overshooting the output final value this is the lowest time that can be achieved uh, for the response to finally settle to its um, final value again a critically responsed circus, uh, circuit a critically damped response is such a response 
which has the lowest settling time for any circuit to have a response settled to its final value without overshooting its final value. We will see that in the case of under damped response, the response is going to settle down to the final value in lesser time, but with overshooting. For example, we will see later on that it would behave such a response. It will go to some value, come down, overshoot this value and then come back and then settle down. So now here the definition of for the under damped case we will change a bit because it will it will not all the values all the values of response will not always be positive it will be negative at some time so we will we will discuss the absolute value so without looking at the sign so the maximum value and the time for which it becomes less than one percent of the max value will be lower in this case or it may happen that this is larger than the the uh, maximum uh, one percent of the maximum value so the settling time would have to be somewhere here in any case either this will be the settling time or this will be settling time depending upon how how large is this overshooting case so we will see that the lowest time to settle is achieved in critically damped circuits. However, there is a condition without overshooting. the final value. This is this overshooting has another name in literature and is known as ringing. The response should not ring across the final value. Whereas in the case of underdamped, we will see later on, the underdamped response may have lower uh, settling time but with overshooting or ringing. Just as a comment let me tell you that such damped systems are uh, not always electrical they can be you have definitely come across uh, damping in your life whenever you ride a car the suspension system is a system that uh, that has damping in it and it's very important to understand what kind of response is desired in a certain scenario so for example suppose you have a car you the wheel the wheel of the car the tire of the car experiences a bump a pit or maybe a speed breaker and and the suspension basically um, uh, expands or contracts so it, it it has to go back to its original position but how does it go to its original position Do, does it uh, ring across uh, ring around its final value compresses more and then expands more and compresses and it starts vibrating uh, around its original position or does it uh, contracts and then expands and then settles in the final position and how long do you want the settling time to be? You might have seen American cars, those old big cars, and you might have seen their suspension at work. After experiencing a bump, they keep uh, bumping for quite a long time because their settling time is large and they want the, the car to be to bump, the suspension to bump across the final value or the ring uh, across the final value and the bumping or the damping takes some time to take place whereas you might have come across um, cases where there, there is absolutely uh, minimal damping or no damping or highly critical, critically damped uh, but we have to change we have to uh, 
um, choose a trade-off. We don't want a single bump to cause uh, bumping or damping to continue uh, for a long time. We want the car to get stable again. But how quickly or how uh, delayed that can be is totally a choice made by the manufacturer. So some cars may, may have a good suspension for a particular case and for other, uh, the other, uh, some other cars may not have very good suspension for the same case. That is why based on how the suspension works, cars may, uh, may be made for different terrains. So not all cars can handle all the terrains. It, it, it all goes to how their suspensions are made. And this is quite understandable. Again, just like the electrical circuits, in mechanical systems, there is this damping and that's very important there. In fact, in the book, there is an example, a case given as a car's suspension system. And uh, it, it, would be, it, may, it may interest you to uh, try to read that through and try to understand what does the author uh, try to say in that case. But uh, I, I will discuss this more after uh, covering the case of underdamped response.